on how the Uganda Police Force is fulfilling its mandate as stipulated under Article 212 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. In 2023, we note that there was a 1.5% decrease in the number of crimes reported to police from 231,653 cases reported in 2022 to 228,074 cases in 2023. I take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to those who were able to lodge their complaints at various police stations of the, the Uganda Police Force in the year 2023. It is these reported complaints that enable us to compile annual crime reports. Relatedly, the force has focused on strengthening discipline and adherence to human rights by introducing disciplinary courts in all districts across the country. The introduction of disciplinary courts marks a significant milestone for the Uganda Police Force. These courts aim at enforcing discipline within the force, ensuring that officers adhere to professional standards and human rights. For instance, out of 933 complaints of human rights violations by the police, 794 were thoroughly investigated and action taken. Additionally, the force has been committed to improving the conditions in detention facilities. The remodeling of 10 facilities in various districts, including Panyadoli, Kiriandongo, Paida, Marasha, and a number of others, has led to the elimination of the soil bucket system, providing 68% coverage of waterborne toilets. Also, the police, in coordination with the sister statute agencies, such as the UPDF, prisons, SFC, JIC, ESO, CI, and ESO, combated various forms of crime. These joint initiatives have resulted in the reduction of gun-related crimes, illegal firearms, and ammunition prol proliferation. Our success has been due to the hard work of the police, in coordination with the sister statute agencies, the reorganization of the CID, improved detection and investigation methods, and the establishment of a proactive network of credible intelligence. Furthermore, our strategic partnerships with the community, including the involvement of other intelligence components, have greatly contributed to disrupting and dismantling criminal elements targeting our country. I therefore express my gratitude to H. the President of Uganda for his guidance and enduring support to the force. I also thank the Minister of Internal Affairs and his entire team at the Ministry Headquarters for their stewardship throughout the year. Despite considerable challenges faced and violent acts by groups like ADF, the force has remained dedicated to its mission. The force has also worked extensively on resolving cases related to domestic violence, land conflicts, armed robberies, to mention but a few. Furthermore, I commend the increased cooperation of police with the Office of the DPP, the Judiciary, and other partners within the criminal justice system. As we focus on future policing, there are critical areas that the institution must address. These include the following. Improving the general welfare of the personnel, conducting specialized trainings, carrying out more recruitment to address the police population ratio. As I conclude, I thank the director CID and all those involved in organizing this occasion. Now, I will invite the director of CID to give us an executive summary of the report. I thank you all. Thank you very much.
IGP and your deputy and colleagues, my, my Lord, the DPP and the entire protocol which has been laid here in the interest of time. I want to, on behalf, sir, of the colleagues whom you tasked us to put up this report, take this opportunity to thank you so much for the strategic guidance, but also the, 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 the constant reminders and support. Now, with your permission, Afanda GP, I will briefly summarize the executive summary of this report, which my team is going to relay. And then, uh, in, as we go on with your guidance, we shall see whether we can have maybe one or two other colleagues, traffic, and maybe fire, if possible, to say something briefly, and then we shall wind up our presentation to the public. Now, as you may realize from the speech of the IGP, we have good news to the country. Uh, last year, standing in this very position, we did report to the country that the crime rate had gone up by 18% from the statistics we presented then. But we are glad to say this year, instead, we have seen a 1.5% percent decrease in the volume of crimes that we are reported. And for us, this is huge because it is a combination of all the efforts of our colleagues in the different parts and departments of the Uganda police and other security agencies. Now, uh, just to our team in the details we shall provide you, I've made this time an analysis for the last four actually from 2019 to date. So the graph you see there, and I believe our executive summary is being circulated to you, basically shows how we have performed over the last uh, so many years in terms of trend. But just to pick out a few issues, we have a few facts for you. Out of these cases, uh, 94,533 of these cases are still under your inquiry, while 48,632 cases were not proceeded with basically because sometimes these are civil matters and they have nothing perhaps to do with our investigations. And there are for people report and we encourage them to go and go to the courts of law. But we also see that we had some good case, 84,907 cases that we are taken to court. And for us, this shows the, 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 the good partnership the IGP was talking about with DPP and all the justice chain of cases reported, investigated, and the prosecution is able to produce them in court. Now, we had some convictions to any police detective, they will tell you, and the prosecutor, my lord there, they will tell you that when you get a conviction, that's a huge uh, milestone for any investigator. Not that we are sadists, but we believe that the case was well investigated, well prosecuted, and the judge has taken a decision to convict someone. So, in terms of statistics, we see um, 27,125 cases which got convictions, but there were some cases which were acquitted, 843, and then the cases which were dismissed, 10,096. Now, this can fall in so many sectors. It's not necessarily the failure of police. Sometimes they, that's the independence of the judiciary. They will make their own decisions upon what we have been able to gather. We still have some cases which are pending in court, which is 46,843. But 
we have a number of 123,590 which are in the system. It's between police and DPP. In that, we take time to make sure we have the right quality of evidence which can eventually be presented to court. But just to highlight, as Fanda IGP said, we can just give you a snapshot of the details which are in this report based on the major, major cases that we look out for. In terms of thefts, you can see on the screens, we have had some increment of the cases to, to, to 5,901. We see these cases of thefts going on in different parts of the country, especially in urban areas. And the causes range from social, economic, and sometimes political. So these are it's a complex situation, and I believe the, the justice chain will have a lot of conversations on this. We can take you to assaults. You see we have had a decline. Last year we were reporting 32,041. We have gone down to 29,884. This is commendable, but we think together we can bring this figure down. On sex-related offenses, interestingly, we see a slight increment in what we reported last year, and we have 14,846. This continues to keep us awake. My Lord, the DPP will tell you, it's always painful when you find young people, especially our children, being defiled, being misused, being taken advantage of. So there are a number of cases we don't see as a, a, a very